All right, here's my test setup for SCRs. Up here are triacs. Down here are SCRs. The reason I had to resort to doing this is many of these transistor checkers that you've seen in my other videos or even built into these voltmeters cannot check most triacs and SCRs. They don't generate enough gate voltage to even trip them on. So just a brief outline, here's my control board that you will be seeing used in the videos. Here's This is a zero insertion force socket, and we will be taking readings off this digital voltmeter. Here is the schematic. I have a 25 volt AC. Actually, my transformer measures 28 volts coming in. Coming in. We have a 5K potentiometer that controls the gate current to whatever device I'm testing. You have a dropping resistor and you have a diode in the gate circuit. This is to be used with SCRs. Otherwise, when you're testing triacs, you have to close S1. My load is a 24 volt incandescent panel lamp, and across that panel lamp is connected to the red DVR you saw in the video. Alright, this schematic shows the connection of the SCR with the test circuit. The anode goes back to the lamp, the gate goes to the gate circuit with that switch open, or you can close it. It doesn't seem to make any difference, but I thought it would be good to have it there. And of course the cathode is here. When I switch this, when I switch this on by ad adjusting R1, the lamp will gradually light up. What's best is if you turn it and the SCR pretty well kicks in all the way and conducts. Let's watch a short clip on how the SCR reacts in this test circuit. Let's, do, let's observe what happens with an SCR. The meter is set for DC, if you can see that. The power is off. I'm going to plug in an SCR. An SCR, when turned on, of course, acts as a half-wave rectifier. So when I trip it on, all I'm going to do is get pulsating DC. Now I will explain why you got the readings on the digital voltmeter that you did. Here is my 28 volts AC. That's what I actually measured coming in. This load represents the lamp that the meter was connected across. Here is my SCR. There's the diode and the gate. All right, I didn't use a switch, but I could have. Instead, I adjusted it. I adjusted the potentiometer so I could turn the SCR fully on. What this does when turned on it acts as a diode and as you see here because the anode went back to the load and the cathode down to common I was getting conduction on the positive half cycle. Why did I read around 12.5 volts or whatever DC? This is why. RMS times 1.414 equals peak. Peak times 0.314 equals average, which equals the half-wave pulsating DC that I got. 28 volts AC times 1.414 is about 39.5 volts. 39, that gives me the peak. 39.5 volts times 0.314 equals around 12.5 volts DC. That's why you saw the voltage we were measuring. And that tells me that the circuit was working. Alright, here's sort of closer to what I, what I have, but this still holds up true. Now, I put a potentiometer in okay in this case it's not the schematic isn't exactly like this but it's the same idea as i adjusted the potentiometer i changed the trigger point in the 
half-wave rectification. If I don't trigger it on all the way, this sort of this equation down here falls apart. But in the case of this, I emphasize switching it on all the way. All right, the rest of this video, which is has the circuit connections you see here, is going to run another series of tests and expand on what we've already discussed. All right, the first device we're going to check is an SCR. I'm just going to go ahead and plug it into the socket. Here's a power switch. I will make sure the potentiometer is turned all the way down. Put on your power. Turn the knob and you'll see the light light up. And you will see 12 volts or so. This is pulsating DC that you're reading across the light bulb. The SCR is fully turned on. What you have to understand with that is when an SCR is turned on, it's like it acts as a diode. So you're getting half wave rectification, either though I have 25, almost 28 volts coming into this from that particular transformer, I'm only producing a little less than 13 volts pulsating DC. Let's look at the schematics and I will explain how that works, but let's try a few more of them first. Let's go ahead and cut that off. That is a particularly sensitive, you barely turn it and it comes on. So that's a pretty sensitive SCR. This SCR is not so sensitive. I had to turn it a lot further and it didn't snap on all the way all the way up to 12 unless I really keep turning it almost to the end. So this tells you a couple of things. It tells you how sensitive the gates to an SCR really are. It also tells you that different SCRs have different trip on gate voltages. You can use this device here to tell how well you can cut on SCRs. Then you got crazy stud mounted things like this. You can go ahead. I already know that the uh, case is the anode. The large pin is the cathode. This one's the gate. Make sure you plug this in, orient it correctly. Now we can go ahead and test it. And there it goes. That's, that's one of these big high current SCRs that's used in industry. So that's our discussion on testing SCRs. I don't even have to use the socket. If I wanted to, I could always use my zero insertion force socket. One thing about these TO220 style triax and SCRs, the gates are in the same locations on both at least on most of the ones I've dealt with. Drop it in the socket. Cut the power back up. And there you go. That's a good SCR. And none of these would check on the other two transistor checkers from my other videos. So that completes this lesson on SCRs.